Last weekend, while I was looking for a new idea to rebuild, I came across this awards collection focused on loading animations. That's where I found this amazing landing page rebuild concept. It had received an honorable mention on awards last year. I figured it would be a fun one to recreate, especially since it's been a while since we last explored a landing page reveal animation like this. So after a few hours of work, I put together a similar version of that experience using just HTML, CSS, GSAPS, Flip plugin, and a bit of split text. It's a great example of how you don't need complex code to build modern cool animations. I used GSAP Flip to animate the images smoothly from one position to another and paired it with a minimal split text setup to reveal all the text elements using timeline based animation. If you enjoy seeing award winning animations broken down and rebuilt from scratch, give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a complete new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into it. I'll begin with a simple section and give it a class of hero. This will be our main wrapper for the landing animation. Inside that, the first thing I add is a hero background div. We'll animate this element later as the page loader background that scales in from the bottom. Next up is the counter block. I've created three divs inside, counter 1, 2 and 3. These will each hold animated numbers that run during the loading sequence. We'll create the digits dynamically using JavaScript later. Then we have got the images container. This holds all the concept images will be moving across the screen. I've added 15 image wrappers here. You can replace these with whatever visuals you want to feature. Below that, I'm adding a basic nav tag. On the left is the logo name. In the center, we have got some placeholder links. And on the right, there is another placeholder link. I've also added a div with the class name divider underneath the nav, which will animate in later for that sleek horizontal line reveal. After that comes the sidebar. It's positioned to the left and contains a small logo and a vertical divider line. We'll style it later using CSS. Then we have the main heading area with a class of header where I placed the site's headline. Under that is the site info block. It holds a short subheading, a horizontal divider and two lines of meta content just to give it that editorial feel. And finally, we have a footer-like element called hero footer where I placed some more dummy text. That's the full HTML structure, clean, minimal and perfectly laid out for animation with GZAP. Next, we'll move on to the CSS part. You can see I've set up a few CSS variables using the root selector. These include background and foreground colors, a loader background for the intro animation, and a light stroke color we'll use for the dividers. Then we'll reset the base styles, removing all the margin and padding, and setting box sizing to border box for consistent layouts. For the body, I'm using a modern sensory font called New Montreal, and applying the foreground color as the default text color. Images are styled to cover their containers using object fit cover and stretched to full width and height. Next, I'll style the text. For H1, we'll go big and bold with a large font size, reduced letter spacing and a tight line height to keep it looking clean and editorial. H2 is slightly smaller but follows the same visual language, moderate weight, clean spacing and compact line height. Then for the links and paragraphs, I'm giving them the same foreground color, no underlines and slightly bolder weight. Now we move on to the hero section, which spans the full viewport and serves as the canvas for the landing animation. It's set to position relative so that all child elements can be absolutely positioned within it and we clip any overflow to keep animations contained. Inside the hero, we have the hero background, which is a full screen overlay used during the intro animation. It starts scaled down on the Y axis and expands upwards as the animation plays. Then we have the counter, which is fixed to the bottom right corner. This is our preloader number ticker. It's styled with large text and we use clip path to contain the scrolling digits within a defined height. Each digit column, counter 1, 2 and 3, is nudged slightly to adjust the spacing around fonts and we have some horizontal offsets on specific digits to fine tune the appearance. Next is images container which holds all the image cards we animate in the intro. It's absolutely positioned to fill the hero and each image inside it is styled with a fixed width a cinematic aspect ratio, rounded corners, and hidden overflow to keep the images neatly framed. There is also a special class called Animate Out, which shifts the images to the bottom right corner after the flip transition begins. We also define a generic divider class with a subtle stroke background. This gets reused in navbars and sidebars as a visual separator. 
Now we move on to the navigation section. The navbar is horizontally padded and set up as a flex container to space the logo and links evenly. The links group has spacing between elements. And the divider underneath starts scale down so you can animate in later using GSAP. Then we set up the sidebar which hugs the left edge of the screen and vertically centers a tiny logo at the top. It includes a vertical divider that grows from the top when the animation begins. Next, we place the main header in the header. It's positioned about a third from the top and pushed in from the left, giving us a clean hero layout with strong hierarchy. On the right side, site info holds the subheading and meta information. This is vertically centered and stacked in a neat column with spacing between items. Like before, the divider here is initially scaled to zero, so we can animate it in. At the very bottom, we place hero footer. It anchors to the bottom left and adds a nice finishing touch to the hero. Now here is an important utility we'll need later. These are some classes used in combination with GSAP's split text plugin. We hide overflow on each line and push the text down using a translate Y. This lets us animate each line upwards one by one for that elegant split text reveal. And finally, we have a responsive media query that adjusts spacing and font sizes for smaller screens. It shrinks the heading sizes, hides navigation links, enlarges the image grid slightly, and repositions the header and info blocks to keep everything readable and centered on tablets and phones. That wraps up the CSS. Next, we'll move into JavaScript and see how we bring it all to life with GSAP animations and flip transition. We'll start by importing GSAP along with two plugins, flip and split text. Once that's done, we register both plugins with GSAP so we can start using them in our animations. Now the first function we are writing is setup text splitting. Inside this, we are selecting all the main text elements, heading, paragraphs and links because we'll be animating them line by line. For each of these elements, we use split text to break them into individual lines and assign the class line to each line. That allows us to target them in a consistent way later using CSS and GSAP. Then for each line, we grab its text content and wrap it inside a span tag. This gives us a wrapper we can animate with translate Y, which is what creates that smooth vertical reveal effect you saw earlier. This setup is crucial because it lays the foundation for all our timeline based text animations that will trigger later in the intro. Next, we'll move into the counter setup and then hook into the main timeline. We'll define a function called create counter digits and inside that we start by targeting the first counter column counter1. Here we manually create two divs, one for zero and one for one, and assign them the number class. We also apply an additional offset class to the second digit so it aligns nicely when animated. Then we append them both to the first counter. For the second counter column, we loop from zero to ten and dynamically create number divs. When the loop reaches ten, we reset the content to zero so the count wraps visually. We also apply a slight offset class to the digit one so the spacing feels just right. Then we move on to the third column. This one is meant to scroll through more digits, so we create 30 numbers in total using the module operator to loop through 0 to 9 repeatedly. And finally, we add one last 0 at the end to help create a seamless stop in the animation. This whole setup gives us full control over each digit and lets us animate them smoothly with GSAP in the next step. Now let's animate the counter. We define a reusable animate counter function that takes in a counter element, a duration, and an optional delay. First, we calculate the height of a single digit using client height. 
Then we calculate the total distance the counter needs to travel by multiplying the number of digits by that height minus 1 to account for the start position. Then we animate the counter upwards using GSAP's two method, moving it vertically with a smooth power to easing. Now let's jump into animating the image stack. We create a function called animate images. This grabs all the image elements and first removes the animate out class from each to reset their position. Then we use the set flip to capture the initial state of all the images. Next, we add the animate out class back which repositions the images and flip will animate between the original and new states. We create a main timeline and use flips from method to interpolate the movement of all images smoothly. This includes a stagger for a nice cascading effect. Then we loop through each image individually to add a custom scale animation. Each image scales up quickly using power 3 in and then eases back down to its original size with power 3 out easing. The scale up and down combo is what adds that polished bounce to the transition. Finally, each of these scale timelines is inserted into the main timeline with a slight delay between each, making the whole sequence feel responsive and alive. This function returns the entire animation timeline so it can be triggered later when the loader completes. Now let's bring everything together inside the DOM content loaded event listener. As soon as the page finishes loading, we first call setup text splitting function to wrap all text elements with split text and then initialize the counter digits using the create counter digits function. Next, we animate all three counters, each with different durations and a slight delay for the first digit so it appears in a staggered countdown like motion. After that, we set up a main GSAP timeline for the overall reveal sequence. We begin by collapsing the image elements to scale 0 just to prep them for the animation. Then we animate the hero background to scale vertically from bottom to top, revealing the background in a smooth motion. Once the background expands, we animate the image stack, scaling them from 0 to full size with a nice stagger for that rising stack effect. As soon as the image stack is in place, we fade out the counter. This is where we trigger the animate images function to add the bouncing flip animation we built earlier. Next up, we reveal the vertical divider inside the sidebar by scaling its height from 0 to 100%. We follow that with the horizontal dividers inside the nav and site info sections, scaling them along the x-axis and a stagger to create pacing. Then the logo inside the sidebar scales up to its full size. After that, we animate all the nav and link texts since these were split using split text. They animate upwards into view line by line with a crisp stagger and easing. And finally, we bring in the headline, site info and footer callout, all sliding up in perfect sync using the same animation strategy. This sequence gives the whole landing page a highly polished, editorial style reveal using just GSAP timelines and a few simple layout techniques. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.